Welcome to the Prayer Motivator devotional broadcast with Daniel White III. We are glad that you have joined us as Daniel White III motivates us and encourages us to simply just pray for the glory of God. Daniel White III is the national best-selling author of over 20 books. He has spoken in meetings across the United States and in over 25 foreign countries. He is the president of Gospel Light Society and Torch Ministries International. Now here's your host, Daniel White III. Welcome to another Prayer Motivator Devotional Broadcast, broadcast number 394. As always, it is so good to be with you today to encourage you to pray. Today I would like to begin by sharing with you a poem titled Talking to God by Emily McAdams. We need to talk to God each day. We do this best through prayer. He's waiting for our call to Him, no matter when or where. We can pray in early morning. We can pray to Him at night. But we need to set aside a time to keep Him in our sight. We can tell Him all our worries. We can tell Him all our woes. We can confess all our sins to Him, though He already knows. When we are heavy laden and don't know what to do, let's take His yoke upon us and He will see us through. He's there to help us bear our load. He's always, he always knows what's best. His yoke is easy, his burden light. He can put our souls at rest. Ladies and gentlemen, by way of remembrance, the simple purpose of this broadcast is to encourage, motivate, and exhort you to simply just pray. This radio broadcast is not necessarily for people who already know the secret and power of prayer and who actually practice genuine prayer on a regular basis. Rather, it is for those who may find it difficult to pray or for people who claim they do not have time to pray. I am convinced that most Christian people do not need to learn how to pray. They simply need to just pray. If I can encourage you to just pray, yes, in the spirit of Nike, just do it. All sorts of wonderful things will begin to happen to you, in you, and for you, your family, and whatever God has called you to do. We do not pray based upon our subjective feelings and emotions. We pray based upon objective facts in the Word of God by faith. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, our prayer motivator passage from the Word of God today is Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 through 13, which reads, After this manner, therefore pray ye, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Allow me to share with you some important insights regarding this passage from Matthew Henry's commentary. As we forgive our debtors, 
is not a plea of merit, but a plea of grace. Those that come to God for the forgiveness of their sins against him must make conscious of forgiving those who have offended them, else they curse themselves when they say the Lord's Prayer. Our duty is to forgive our debtors. As to debts of money, we must not be rigorous and severe in exacting them from those that cannot pay them without ruining themselves and their families. But this means a debt of injury. Our debtors are those that trespass against us, that smite us, and in strictness of law might be persecuted for it. We must forbear and forgive and forget the affronts put upon us and the wrongs done to us. And this is a moral qualification for pardon and peace. It encourages to hope that God will forgive us. For if there be in us this gracious disposition, uh, it is wrought of God, and therefore is a perfection eminently and transcendently in himself. It will be an evidence to us that he has forgiven us, having wrought in us the condition of forgiveness. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we will share more from this powerful passage uh, in our next broadcast, If the Lord Should Tarry His Coming and We Live. My personal encouragement to you today is four more ways to pray for other people. Number one, ask that the person have the mind of Christ. Number two, ask, ask that the person grow daily in Christ-like maturity. Number three, ask that the person put on the full armor of God. Number four, ask that the person be alert to Satan's strategy. Our prayer motivator quote today is from Louis Palau. He said, you can read all of the manuals on prayer and listen to other people pray. But until you begin to pray yourself, you will never understand prayer. It's like riding a bicycle or swimming. You learn by doing. Our prayer motivator devotional today is part 25 of our series titled, Does God Work Miracles Today? From Dr. John R. Rice, that great prince of prayer and author of the best-selling book, Prayer Asking and Receiving. Miracles of the Bible are given as examples for us. He goes on to say, in the very nature of the case, the fact that the Bible is full of miracles must intend to teach us that God is a miracle-working God. Why should God tantalize us with accounts of how he has blessed others, how he has heard their prayers, how he has healed their sicknesses? how he has provided for their needs. If he be not willing to do the same for us whenever it is right and good. But the scripture repeatedly tells us that these miracles are given for examples to us. For instance, in Psalm 81.10, God tells us, I am the Lord thy God which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Open thy mouth wide, and I will fill it. What could the Lord here mean but this, that he who did miracles before is able to do them again? He who blessed Israel with mighty blessings will do the same for us if we trust him. Evidently, he means that all the, the wonders accompanying the deliverance of the people of Israel and their support and protection in the wilderness journeys are written to encourage us. Therefore, we should open our mouths wide in faith 
and receive like blessings when needed. Now, dear friend, it is time for us to pray and ask God to bless us with miracles, the miracles that we need in our modern day life. Now, friend, please join me in prayer. Holy Father God, as we have just been reminded from your word, Lord, help us to fully understand that every answer to prayer from you is a miracle from you. We praise you and we thank you for the miracles that you have worked for us in the past and the miracles that you're working for us now. Lord, it is a miracle for us to be here. We pray also that you would bless and guide and direct all of your pastors and church leaders and missionaries around the world who stand for you and who are truly helping your people and feeding your sheep. Lord, we individually confess our sins of disobedience, rebelliousness, pride, stubbornness, foolishness. Uh, Lord, anything that is not pleasing in your sight, for Jesus Christ's sake, please forgive us. And Lord, fill us all afresh and anew with the fullness and the anointing and the power of your Holy Spirit, the energy of your Holy Spirit to do your work and will. Lord, we pray for over three million people to come to know you as Savior. We pray for the revival of your church. We pray for the healing of this nation. We pray, Lord, that going forward you would bless us with the godly leadership that we need. We pray now also for the uh, leadership that we have. We pray for their salvation, leadership, guidance, direction. We pray for uh, their wisdom. Um, we pray that you would give them wisdom uh, as uh, the president and all of the governmental officials who run this country, as well as uh, all other leaders in other countries. We do pray for the peace of Jerusalem and for Paris, Lord, all for your uh, second coming. Help us to be ready when you come. Now, Lord, we also pray for three people who have sent in prayer requests to our ministry here, the Gospel Light Society. And we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for Abraham in India. Bless his finances, his family, touch his sister's life and provide for her. We pray for the salvation of, of him and all of his family. We pray also for Joseline in Uganda. Give her a good financial breakthrough and the right person to marry. Help her daughter to get a sponsor for her education. Lord, we pray for Anna in the Philippines. Give her spiritual revival and deliverance from debts, addiction, and all sins and iniquities. Save and bless all of these people, uh, all of these dear people and their families. Rebuke and bind the devil and his demons and his host from them. Uh, Holy Father God, we rejoice in your saving uh, the following three people. And Lord, we thank you for uh, leading them to yourself by the power of your Holy Spirit. We pray, Lord, that you would strengthen them in the faith, uh, encourage them in the faith, and help them to grow. Help us to do our part in discipling, in discipling them. Help them to find good Bible-believing churches in their area. Lord, we pray specifically for Erica in Jamaica, Naresh Babu in India, Ida in Indonesia. Lord, uh, we pray that you would uh, encourage their hearts today. Help them to uh, take heed to all of the discipleship material that we're sen sending to them daily and how we're praying for them. Now, Lord, we pray for the following people who have been saved for a while, but who have recommitted, recommitted their lives to you. We rejoice with them in this decision, and we pray that they will keep their commitments to you and be strengthened in the faith. We pray specifically for Carissa in uh, Mountain Rouge, Louisiana, uh, Dabitha in India, and John in Nigeria. Lord, help these to find a good Bible-believing church as well that they can grow in 
and to keep their commitment to you. We commit these souls into your hands to do with them as you see fit. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. Now, dear friend, if you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, uh, please allow me to show you how you can get to know him today. All you have to do is believe that Christ died for your sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures and you will be saved yes it is as simple as that just understand that you are a sinner and that you need a savior and then put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ who shed his blood on the cross for your sins as the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world he was buried and he rose again by the power of God for you and for me and everybody. And all you have to do is put your faith and trust in him and he'll save you. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world, that includes you and me, that he gave his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, and that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The Bible states in the book of Romans 10, 9, and 13 that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you are willing to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ for your salvation, please pray with me the following simple prayer. Holy Father God, I realize that I am a sinner and that I have done some bad things in my life. For Jesus Christ's sake, please forgive me of my sins. I now believe with all of my heart that Jesus Christ died for me, was buried, and rose again. Lord Jesus, please come into my heart and truly save my soul and change my life today and forever. Amen. Now, dear friend, if you just trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior and you prayed that prayer with me and meant it from your heart, I declare to you that based upon the Word of God, you are now saved and you're on your way to heaven. I want to congratulate you on doing the most important thing in life, and that is receiving Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. For more information to help you grow in your newfound faith in Christ, Go to GospelLightSociety.com and read what to do after you enter through the door. Until next time, my beloved, remember, pray, think, do. God bless you.